What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna to be doing a first shot of another new gun. Today we're gonna to have a pretty good day, I bet, because we are gonna be using the new Sig Spear LT. Now this is the lightweight version of the new Sig Spear that we had on the channel a couple of months ago. Today what we're going to do is we're going to take a mixed variation of ammunition, a little bit of 5.56, a little bit of 223, some 55 grain, some 77 grain. I got some SIG, some PMC, all the usual suspects. Today we're going to be running a little Hornady 75 as well. And we are going to shoot a couple hundred rounds through this today for you and get some initial impressions. And then later in the month we'll probably be doing a full thousand round review. Maybe two months, sometimes it depends. So first off, what is the SIG? Spear. Well, the Sig Spear LT is the tiny little baby version of the MCX Spear that the military just adopted. So the MCX is not an AR-15, although it kind of looks like it plays one on TV. A 5.56 with a piston system that gives you a little bit less shit back in your bolt carrier group, gives you a little less gas, and makes it a little bit more suppressible. We have an M-lock rail with a 16-inch barrel. Now, you can get these in 11.5 or 16, but if you want a full-length rifle, you don't want SBR it, 16 is the way to go. Uh, so we have a full 16-inch barrel, gives you good velocity, gives you good hitting power, and is for sure still the best overall barrel length in my personal opinion. Gas system is adjustable, it's very nice. So if you wanna put a suppressor on there, you can adjust it if you don't have one of the new flow-through cans. Uh, vertical grip on it, Surefire as always, standard setup aim point as always and one of the cool things about the uh, rail is it's very modular so you can take it off super easy and you can replace it with other stuff very cool very similar to the mpx as well full ambi controls very nice you can see left-handed bolt release left-handed mag release and then on the right side as well the safety is also ambi and then because it is a piston design it is bufferless so it doesn't have any buffer tubes so it does have a completely folding stock now that's good for some people, not good for some people. Personally, I don't like this stock, but I do see the appeal. Uh, a lot of times, if you're gonna be running your rifle slung for long periods of time, sometimes you want it out of the way. If you're gonna store it in a small space, you want it out of the way, I get all that. QD mounts in the stock and QD mounts on the uh, back of where the end plate would be on an AR. Uh, I would prefer some QD mounts in the rail. Uh, they have plenty of space. I'm not sure why they're not there. I would have liked one here and one up top because sometimes you want it back here for moving quick and sometimes you want it all the way at the front for stability. The color is awesome and the fact that it's adopted by the US military gives it a cool factor that most rifles just simply can't match. I do want to mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. I bought this gun with the Patreon dollars. It was not sent to be my SIG. And we really appreciate the support because it can be kind of pricey, especially in today's market. Not only would I appreciate if you would subscribe to Patreon, but I'd really appreciate if you'd hit that notification bell because most people say they're not seeing my videos anymore. And if you want to see more cool shit like this, that's the best way to do it. And finally, a link to a local shelter named Iowa. It's the YSS. That's in the description as well. Please get on there and donate to those kids. Looks left. Yes. Closer. Okay, yep. not close enough though, yeah? Cool. Very close. I was aiming for the bolt on that season target and I hit it, so. Good. That's a super uncomfortable. Fuck this stock. It's made by the same people who make airplane seats.
I bet we're gonna get great groups at 120 degrees. I like what you've got going on here. Yeah, just a little to the left, just a little bit is all. Elevation looks to be good. Uh, it's a MOA group there, almost. Mostly two to one MOA, and for a rack grade infantry gun, that's real good, you know? MOA will get you a long way out if you know how to shoot. And, uh, we're seeing pretty good stuff, but we're gonna heat this way up. Uh, I'll probably shoot 200, my wife will probably shoot 100, and uh, no, we'll I... get at least three rounds for you today. So, with that being said, let's start uh, shooting. looking pretty moist there outlaw yeah so far we're using uh, PMC 55 grain I was worried uh, sometimes you want a little hotter stuff in military guns it's been working great so far so good old Walmart ammunition and uh, gen 3 P mag seem to be working so all the same compatibility as an AR fell over. Now we're going to be shooting a couple different types of ammo. We have XTAC 556 in a couple of these mags, and we have a Federal one or Federal 55 grain. So we use a little bit different ammo, uh, and then we even have a Lancer mag mixed in just to uh, test reliability. Freedom dust. works. Want to try it? Sure. Look at me. I'm such a baddie. <laughs> yes, you are. Don't fuck with me, people. I will get you. Forward assist, here. No. I don't know. Right here? Okay, thank you. I don't know this gun. You didn't give me any instructions.
Y'a le fer, hein. What okay. Was it? Light primer strike. Primer strike, yep. Is that and this is uh, American Eagle 55 grain. 223, so uh, light primer strike, nothing happened. But is it my fault? No, no, it's not your fault. Now I'm out. Nice. God. I just love these. One failure though, that's interesting. It that's is. That's interesting. Could have been me. I don't, I don't think it was you just simply because of how it failed. Nice, shot. nice job. Stephanie! That elbow just a little bit, and what that does, that elbow over there, what that does is create kind of a shoulder pocket. Lean your, your shoulder, lead your body a little bit forward like that. Okay. Bring this down on your shoulder a little bit more, bring your head to it, if that makes any sense. You want yeah. a little more contact on it. Okay. You feel good right there? Yes, but okay. there we go. Flip this guy down, and then you can put your finger on the trigger, okay. and we'll give it a go. Nice shot. I love it. Any difference in an AR and actual usability? Oh, zero. Yeah, not really, right? No, you got an AR with amazing. a folding stock. Yep. Kind of cool. I love it. No, here. Oh, shit. Aww. Yep. Hi, little mousy. Hi. Well, if you were in my house, I'd murder you, but you're out here Hold minding your business. All right, well, now that I've moved all those barrels and it's 120 outside and I'm tired, let's do some CQB or at least some barrel protecting. Okay. They win. Works for me. All right, so now we're just gonna do some drills with it, see how fast we go. I will start with a 222 uh, from High Ready. Missed one there. 198. Try that again. Missed it again. Keep over swinging. All right, 204. Try a uh, build drill. High Ready. Okay. One three nine. I think you only did a five. Could be right. Having a little problem with the safety operation. One six nine. Two left.
Didn't like that? Yeah, I got a double feed. One, two, three. One twenty. One seventeen. Pretty quick. Wish I had more ammo than that. Getting dirty though, 300 rounds. I feel like you could win a wet t-shirt contest. Not only could I, I have. Oh my god. A story <laughs> but, for another time. <laughs> I actually, I haven't won a wet t-shirt contest, but I have won a Sexiest Man on the Boat competition, and I've also won a, a dance, dance competition yep. against a guy at Senior Frog, so beat that. In Nassau, Bahamas. It's true, and I was wasted, and that's the only way that is allowed. But anyway, uh, the Sig Spear LT is certainly, to me at least, as cool as I hoped. I like the look of this rifle. I like the idea of this rifle. I like the MCX as a platform. It's a 5.56 version of the MPX, which I obviously like, and I used as my uh, uh, PCC carbine for a very long time. It just recently got replaced by the JP5, but it's certainly still my backup, and I still love that gun. And it works equally as well in a 5.56, in my opinion. It offers a lot of advantages over most rifles aside from maybe the AR-15 and I think there certainly are some advantages over that as well. Uh, the uh, modularity of the rail system is great. A lot of people complain about the thickness of the rail. I freaking like that as a big guy. I really enjoy that. It's easy to hold on to. I like it thick. Are you AM, ASMR in them? Uh, <laughs> interesting though, right where I hold my hands uh, is exactly where the piston system is. And it was 120 uh, heat index today, and this is Iowa, it doesn't generally get that hot, so I'm literally fucking dying. And uh, it got really hot, but it didn't get unusable hot. So we shot 350, 400 rounds. I'd have to do the replay to see. We're somewhere in the area of 400. And it certainly didn't lose any perceivable accuracy 100 yards and in. Uh, also had one malfunction, but only with my wife and none with me, and that was with old ammunition from stripper clips. So take what you will with that. All of the new inbox ammunition worked very well. You had a double feed? Yeah, but I think I might have caused that. Oh, okay. I might have caused, I, I'll have to look at the range footage. I did have a double feed, but that also was with, uh, not to try to get, make any more excuses, but that was with polymer, polymer, uh, poly, oh. polyfrangible, yep. Yep, yep, yep. and that can be an issue with guns, and we didn't adjust the gas system, even though you can, we didn't, it ran them both. We ran SIG 77 grain, and we ran 45 grain polyfrangible, frange uh, not in the same mag, but within two mags of each other, and both of them ran well. That's nice because you're doing the full spectrum of ammunition and it seems to work relatively well. We didn't shoot a suppress, but we will. I actually, I'll probably have a new Huxworks can on this uh, in the next couple weeks. Uh, I'll probably shoot and uh, try that out. Um, the recoil impulse was fucking great. It was really good, it was really easy to shoot it. Uh, really light, much more manageable than the uh, the big boy, the Sig Spear. Uh, this I would consider to be a much more viable option, not only for civilian self-defense, uh, because of its size and weight, and uh, 556 in close range is very, very lethal, more than lethal enough. I know people say you gotta go 308 for, five, for home defense. I don't know about that. I feel like unless you're shooting long distances or you're doing a lot of hunting, uh, 556 is more than enough, especially out of a 16 inch barrel, to deal with anything you need to deal with inside a house. And uh, I think this would provide enough firepower, I think it would provide enough speed, accuracy, and it would be a much lighter usable package as opposed to that five, or, uh, 7.62. Um, 
Now we're gonna shoot this a distance or in review, we'll probably throw this in the mud too, if you really wanna see that. I would like to see a mud test of this, see how reliable it really is. Uh, folding stock is nice for uh, all kinds of different storage capability type of things. Trigger's nice, has a good reset, it's fast, I won't be replacing the trigger. I thought I would have to replace the trigger with Geisley, but it's very nice. I wish the safety was at 45, but I can fix that myself. Uh, overall though, super impressed, but is it worth $2,000? Well, $2,500. Well, that's a matter of who you are. Uh, if you want the latest and greatest, if you want to have what the military is using, or at least a variation of it, uh, this is a good way to get into it, and it's not overly priced for what you get. For $2,500, I think you get a super quality rifle so far. We're going to do a full review on it, but in my first impressions, I think it's probably worth the money, providing you know what you're getting when you get into it. If you're looking for just the standard issue 16-inch 5.56, IWI exists, you know, Smith & Wesson exists, the Sport 2, all those guns, they're gonna do the home defense job almost as well as this for six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. If you're that guy, go that route, I have no problem with that. If you're this guy, I have no problem with that either because I love this gun and I'm a big fan. Uh, this is another contender for the truck gun uh, replacement. I've been thinking about replacing my truck gun. The first contender was a Blackout 13.7. Uh, the next contender is this and there is another one you guys are gonna be seeing later in the month. Now, as far as truck gun goes, a lot of comments on that. I do not leave my gun in my truck in an alley, unlocked. I do not have to worry about that. If you're gonna have a truck gun, you need to have protocols in order for not to get stolen. You need to take it with you, not leave it in your car at night with a big sign that says BCM on your truck so somebody can knock in the window and just take the gun out. If you're gonna have it in the truck, make sure it's in a place that can't be seen from the window so people can't just walk by and, ooh, look at that, $2,000, and knock it in. Don't be an idiot and you can have a truck gun. You know, have it in a lock box, have it out of sight, taking it and out when necessary, only have it in the truck when you're around it, that kind of thing. So uh, be responsible and truck guns will be your friend. Truck gun, I'm a huge fan. And the reason for that is folding stock folds in and out and obviously no buffer system to worry about there. Still got that 16 inch uh, barrels so you're legal in most states. You don't have to worry about getting a hold of the ATF to go over state lines and all that bullshit that comes with SBRs. Uh, I'll probably, if, if it was a truck gun, I'd probably run it very similar to this, no iron sights, comp M5, and then probably a magnifier. The Sig Spear LT 5.56 is certainly my favorite of the two, and I'll tell you why. It's just a more usable platform for most people. It's much uh, more available as far as price, and it's much more economic to feed as well. Cheap 5.56 is always cheaper than cheap 308, so I like it so far. If you wanna see some torture tests, some reliability tests, some comparisons, all that stuff, let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please support our local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.